Hi everybody and welcome to Standard 7. Standard 7 is about uh, parallel lines cut by transversal, properties of quadrilaterals, and properties of circles. So let's take a look at it. Here's Standard 7. Students prove and use theorems involving the properties of parallel lines cut by a transversal, the properties of quadrilaterals, and the properties of circles. And let's see here. Standard 7 is going to be demonstrated in problems 26 through 32. So let's look at problems 26 through 32 in your packet. We'll start with 26. In the accompanying diagram, parallel line L and M are cut by transversal T. Okay, so that tells us that L is parallel to M. So I'm going to make a little parallel marks just, just to make it a little more solid. Okay, which statement about angles 1 and 2 must be true? Well, let's think about this. Angle 1 here has a corresponding angle that is congruent to it, and it's this angle here. So these two angles are congruent. In the same way, angle 2 has a corresponding angle which must be congruent to it. So if you think about this, angle 1 and this angle are a linear pair, just as angle 2 and this angle are a linear pair. And that means that they're supplementary. So if this angle and this angle are congruent, I can say that angle 1 is the same as this one. Therefore, angle 1 is, con is, is supplementary to angle 2. And, of course, angle 2 is supplementary to angle 1. So which statement about angles 1 and 2 must be true, that they are congruent? No, they're not congruent, or they're probably not congruent. That they're complements. Complements means they add to 90 degrees, so that's also not true. Supplement, that means they add to 180. That is the key word, that's what we're looking for, supplementary. And that they're right angles, they're probably not right angles, so that's not your answer. So it's definitely C. All right, let's look at B. What values of A and B make quadrilateral MNOP a parallelogram? Okay, one of the things we need to think about about parallelograms is that opposite sides are congruent. So, this is a little bit of a mathy one. It's kind of clever. Um, we know that this side has to be congruent to this side, and this side has to be congruent to this side. So we're going to write two separate equations. We get 3A minus 2B equals 13, and we get 4A plus b equals 21. So those of you who've ever uh, solved a uh, multivariable uh, system by substitution, that's what we're about to do. We need to, to uh, combine these to uh, eliminate the b. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this one by 2. So I'm going to get 8a plus 2b equals 42. Then I'm going to add this uh, equation to this equation to solve for a. Watch what happens. 3a plus 8a is 11a. Uh, 2b plus negative 2b equals 0. And 13 plus 42 equals uh, 50, uh, 55. Therefore, if 11a equals 55, then a has to equal 5. If a equals 5, we can plug that back in. Let's plug it into this one. 3 times 5 is 15. So 15 minus 2b equals 13. Therefore, uh, b has to equal 1. So a equals 5, b equals 1. That is b. Okay. Uh, number 28, quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. If adjacent angles are congruent, which of the statements must be true? So let's think about this. It's a parallelogram. So parallelograms, this has to be parallel. This has to be parallel. And then it says adjacent angles are congruent. So that means this angle has to be congruent to this angle. So if this angle is congruent to this angle, and this angle is congruent to this angle, and this angle is congruent to this angle, then they're all congruent. If they're all congruent, then they have to all be 90, because after all, all quadrilaterals add up to 360. So if they're all 90, now let's think a little bit about this. If they're all 90, what kind of figure does this actually have to be? A square? Well, not necessarily, because this side doesn't necessarily have to be the same as this. So, square is probably not the right answer. A rhombus? It didn't say anything about all four sides being congruent, so it's not a rhombus. A rectangle? Well, there we go. Four right angles. I think it's a rectangle. Isosceles trapezoid? Definitely not. It's not any kind of trapezoid. In fact, of these four choices, trapezoid is the only one that is not a type of parallelogram. So that was automatically out. Okay, moving on to number 29. Uh, 29. Here it is. Ha ha ha. Okay. Uh, for the quadrilateral shown below, what is measure of angle A plus measure of angle C? So again, we need to know uh, 
quadrilateral. That means it adds to 360. We know that right away. So we know this, we know this, but we don't know this. All it's asking us to find is the sum of these two. So basically, all we've got to do is isolate them. So 95 plus 32 is 127. And we know that the whole thing has to add up to 360. So 360 minus 127 is 233. We don't have to figure out what A and C is. All we've got to do is figure out what the sum is. So we've already got our answer. It's D. It's actually a pretty simple problem. Okay, number 30. If ABCD is a parallelogram, what is the length of segment BD? Okay, here's one fact about parallelograms that not everybody knows. Uh, diagonals bisect each other. And what that means is that this diagonal cuts this diagonal exactly in half. Therefore, if this part is 5, this part has to be exactly the same. And if this part is 6, then this part has to be exactly the same too. So BD is going to be 10, which is what it's asking. So BD is 10. Why? Because in parallelograms, diagonals bisect each other. Good thing to know. Okay, number 31. The diameter of a circle is 12 meters. If P, if point P is in the same plane as the circle and 6 meters from the center of the circle, which best describes the location of P? So I like to, I like to always draw it. So it says the diameter is 12 and that P is 6 from the center. Well, if the diameter is 12, then the radius is 6, right? And the radius, any one of these can be a radius because the radius is the distance from the center to the edge. So if P is 6 from the center, anywhere on this plane, it's always going to end up exactly on the edge of the circle. So any one of these points could be P, but P will always be on the edge of the circle. So let's read our choices. Point P must be on the circle. On the circle is another way of saying on the edge of the circle. So I'm going to go with this is probably my answer, but I'll keep reading just to see if something better sh shows up. Uh, point P must be inside the circle. No, inside the circle, anything less than 6 would be inside the circle. So that cannot be the answer because P is exactly 6 from the center. Point P may be either inside or outside the circle. Or on the circle. No, that's just not true. Point P can only be on the edge of the circle, so it cannot be C. Point P may be either inside the circle or on the circle. It can't be inside because it's exactly 6 from the center. And again, any distance that's 6 away from the, ra from the center is on the edge because 6 is the radius. So the only answer that makes sense is A. Point P must be on the circle. And there you have it. Okay, last one. Uh, number 32, given P is parallel to Q, let's mark them parallel, so they're parallel, and uh, M is parallel to N, so uh, these are also parallel. Okay, and the measure of angle 1 equals 75, so let's write this right away. It says find the measure of angle 2. Well, if we have parallel lines, then we can do some stuff pretty quick. Let's mark corresponding angles congruent, therefore this one here is 75, and then with linear pairs, let's do this one. This one will be 105. Okay, that was pretty quick. We went corresponding angles and linear pairs. Now look at the relationship we have here. We have the 105 here and we have 2 here. These are also corresponding angles. Corresponding angles have to be congruent. Therefore, 2 has to be congruent to this angle. Measure angle 2 is 105 degrees. That is D. And that's it. That's it for uh, standard 7. I know those problems went pretty quick. Make sure to rewind if you're having trouble understanding anything. Thanks a lot. See you next time.